tonight on Bulldog Insider. The Fresno State football team brought the old oil can to San Diego. It stayed there. The Bulldogs came home disappointed in more ways than one. We'll discuss. No disappointment for the Raiders today. Derek Carr led them to victory again. The men's basketball team got a victory today. We'll talk about that, and we'll talk about Club Red in this week's Bulldogs Give Back. Now, KC24's Bulldog Insider, presented by Fashion Furniture. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Bulldog Insider. It's been a little less than 48 hours since the football team lost at San Diego State. Our Julia Lopez was there. She saw the Aztecs win the old oil can and prevent the Bulldogs from being able to make it back to the Mountain West Championship game. Julia. Yeah, Andrew, and over the last six years, the winner of that Fresno State-San Diego State game has gone on to represent the West Division in that title game. So let's head on over to San Diego, where the 7-2 and two Aztecs hosted the 4-5 and five Bulldogs. We knew this game was going to be low scoring. San Diego State has the best defense in conference, allowing just 65 rushing yards per game. And they were like a swarm of bees out there. But there's a bright spot on offense. Jorge Reyna. Is going to scramble, buys time, and finds Zane Pope, who's got some nifty moves. Steps back right here. He's going to cut in, and that is good for 53 yards and inside the 20. A couple plays later, Reyna hands it off to Rivers, and he's going to go up the gut for the three yard score. And after the extra point, dogs on top, seven zip. But this is dangerous on their own. Four yard line, third and nine. Reyna looking for Pope, but it gets intercepted by Tariq Thompson. That would turn into this. Chase Jasmine takes it outside, gets in from two yards out, and that ties it up at seven. On Fresno State's next drive, this happens third and seven. Reyna is going to get picked off once again, this time by Luke Barku. And then we're going to jump to the second quarter. Aztecs with the ball now. And their quarterback, Ryan Agnew, had a big outing. He averages 180 passing yards a game on Friday. He threw for 323 yards. SDSU would settle for a field goal and go up 10 7. Fresno State trying to get something going on offense. Reyna. Steps back and fires it downfield. Looks like a good throw, but Carrick Wheatfall can't come down with it. The offense had a tough time, so the defense trying to make some big stops here. Kevin Atkins is going to muscle his way for the sack. He, they had one of those on the night. The Aztecs would later line up for the field goal right before halftime, and it gets blocked. So the Bulldogs are still within three. They head into the break, trailing 10 7. Nobody would score in the third, but here's the Aztecs on third and goal. Agnew is going to roll out and connects with Jasmine from two yards out. SDSU now up 10, 17 7. Bulldogs moving the chains on this drive inside the five. Reyna to Josh Hoken, who gets in for the score, but it gets called back for holding, and that's a 10 yard penalty. They had seven penalties on the night. That would have made it a three point game if it counted. A few plays later, now third and goal. Reyna trying to find Cam Sutton. But it's high and it goes right into the hands of Barku, his second pick on the night. Reyna's third interception. Aztecs would run the clock down, and that's how this one ends. San Diego State gets the W and takes the old oil can with them. Some bad news on former Sanger and Buchanan star Jalen Cropper. He was seen walking off the field on crutches with a knee brace on his left leg. Tedford didn't have an update on him. So, final score 17 to 7 on San Diego State. Jorge Reyna completed 14 of his 26 passes for just 136 yards, no touchdowns, three interceptions. Ronnie Rivers was the Bulldogs leading rusher with just 47 yards. He did have a rushing touchdown, extending his scoring streak to six games. Zane Pope had three catches for 56 yards. That's a tough opponent for young people to play against because it's just so many moving parts and um, the number one in the conference for a reason. And, you know, so when you have young guys, it's, it's kind of. You know, you, you learn under fire. Uh, we knew if we stuffed them in the run, they'd get into a lot more 11 personnel, which is one tight end, bunch of receivers. So uh, once they got into that, we knew they were basically a pass heavy team. And then they started trying to take shots over our head. And like I said, they made the plays and we didn't. Those tough games, you know, it, build, it builds character in guys. And, you know, like just tough games like this, it makes you see who's like, who's, who's really ready, ready to play football and stuff like that. So it just builds character. And we got to go on to the next game. Fresno State returns home for its next game Saturday against Nevada. Aaron Judge is going to be at that game. Yep. Jordan Luplo was at this game. I think the biggest thing is the, the work ethic you get from Fresno State. Um, 
Coach Bates, Bates will instill, you know, work ethic in us. And, you know, you always got to work for what you want. And uh, I think that plays a big role in the professional um, league. So I think that's, that's the biggest thing I took from Fresno State. All right, time now to go inside the game. Brought to you by Sierra Pacific Orthopedics. Normally, this would be Scott Bemis and Cameron Worrell. Sorry, everyone, you get stuck with me and Jackson Moore today. Just kidding. Always a pleasure to have Jackson in studio with us. He was also at the men's basketball game today at the Save Mart Center. We'll talk about that later in the show. Jackson, before we talk about what happened on the football field, nice to see Jordan Luplo at a game. And Billy Volek was there as well, former Bulldogs supporting current Bulldogs. Yeah, I mean, make it not just even a home game, but on the road in San Diego. It seems like every time the Bulldogs go down there, there's a few former stars. Robbie Rouse is often there, so added to the list. Yeah, Luplo now lives in the San Diego area, and Billy Volek, of course, played for the San Diego Chargers, backed up Phillip Rivers for many, many years. All right, Jackson, the Bulldogs put up just 206 total yards of offense on Friday night, and they allowed Ryan Agnew to pass for 323 yards. Why do you think Fresno State struggled so much on both sides of the ball? You know, it's been offensively a little bit of a surprise because we haven't seen this Bulldog offense get shut down quite like that. I asked the question to Coach Tedford, and I think he kind of agrees with the phrasing the way I asked it. I think the offensive line made it easy, forget, easy for us to forget how many injuries they've suffered over the past few weeks. They kept clicking, scoring well over 30 points the last few games, but they played against a legitimate defense that San Diego State had. And you know, whether it was running the ball or trying to keep Jorge Reina protected, no one looked comfortable on offense, and it was kind of a snowball effect from there. Defensively, the Bulldogs actually kind of set out to do what they wanted to, stop the run. Uh, when San Diego State struggles the run, oftentimes, you know, the, the two games they've lost, they were held under three yards per carry. That's exactly what the Bulldogs did. But we've seen, regardless of the opponent, they've been really tough against the pass. They're, they have not done very well against the pass, no matter who it's been. And Ryan Agnew in San Diego State was no exception. He was able to fit the zone reads a real short, and he was able to win the one-on-one -on -one coverages. The Bulldogs just didn't really have much of an answer of whether it was zone or man. And... Uh, kind of negated all the work that they did in the run. And on the flip side, Fresno State's quarterback, Jorge Reyna, threw three interceptions. And just for 136 yards, a lot of people on the Barkboard message boards aren't too happy with Reyna at the moment. What's your take on where he is now, both in this game and where he is after 10 games? Uh, you know, the performance on Friday was poor. The three interceptions were the most glaring thing. Uh, for the most part, it was a tough night for him, just based on what was going, around, going on around him. The three third-down conversions the Bulldogs made all game long were all based on his legs. Rocky Long made the comment afterwards. Fresno State's best offense was against them was his scrambling ability when plays were breaking down. Uh, but overall, the offense did pour all over. He's had a few of these games now. Colorado State was maybe one of those games. He didn't look especially sharp. I don't think he necessarily deserves all the flack he's getting. I think he's had most of his games have been good enough to get the job done if the defense was holding opponents to fewer points. But that was a game. It's hard to justify what he did out there. He saw a lot of pressure all night. You mentioned the offensive line, I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, three different centers and three different left tackles this season, right? It's been a carousel there. Yeah, it has. And uh, even not just this game, the week before. Right, uh, the they whole were, season. Yeah, they were down to just one offensive lineman that actually started in the USC game to start the year. And it's been an impressive job that we haven't had to talk about them for the last month or so, but it showed against San Diego State. They weren't able to handle that defensive front. So, Jackson, it was a must-win game for Fresno State on Friday night. The Bulldogs can still win out and get to a bowl game, but they can't win the conference this year. How do you think that sits with the players and coaches coming off a 12-win season a year ago? It's tough. I think it's tougher because they've had so many chances. We've talked about after so many losses this year, they still control their own destiny, and yet another opportunity was squandered. And that maybe hurts worse than anything else. If they had lost a game... You know, early on in October and someone was way out in front and they couldn't catch them. That's a different scenario, but here they are, late in November, a chance to win and be in the driver's seat, and they came up short, and they've come up short just a lot over the season, and eventually it's become a team that was almost there, and now it's a team that never got there. Well, their early conference losses were to Air Force and Colorado State. Those are Mountain Division schools, so mm -hmm. that's why up until Friday night, they controlled their own fate. Two games left, Nevada on Saturday, then at San Jose State the following Saturday. What do you think happens? How do those two games play out? You know, Nevada, San Jose State, Fresno State, three wildly inconsistent teams this season. And so it wouldn't surprise me if it went 2-0, 1-1, 0-2. -1, I don't think the Bulldogs are necessarily a good spot right now coming off of this loss against San Diego State. Nevada's got a whole lot more to play for right now. And I would favor Nevada in this game coming up this weekend. And San Jose State's another team they could be playing for bowl eligibility in that finale. It wouldn't surprise me if the Bulldogs get one of them, but 
Um, I, it's hard for me to see them go to a bowl at this point. Can I ask you who do you think wins between San Diego State and Hawaii? Which West Division school is going to represent <laughs> that division in the Mountain West Championship game this year? Because it's always been Fresno State or San Diego State. Julia referenced that. Since the Mountain West went to a conference championship game in 2013, the West Division team has always <laughs> been Fresno State or San Diego State. Is that going to be the case again? Uh, all season long, I would have told you Hawaii, but after watching San Diego State in person, that defense, I'm not as confident in that. The San Diego State does have to go to the islands. I maybe still favor the Rainbow Warriors. Uh, they beat them last year in San Diego. They've got two quarterbacks to go to yeah. if one of them doesn't get the job done. So I think Hawaii's got something going right now, and I'm really surprised Fresno State got out of the islands with the win earlier this year. All right, we'll see what happens. He's Jackson Moore, publisher of BarkBoard.com. We'll bring him back a little bit later when we talk Bulldog basketball. But right now, it's time to take a look at the Mountain West standings. We'll start in the Mountain Division. Boise State actually went down a spot in the AP poll today to 20th, still at 19th in the coaches poll. The Broncos beat New Mexico last night 42 to 9. Air Force with a road win at Colorado State yesterday. Utah State with a home win over Wyoming. After the Aggies, a bit of separation there. Wyoming and Colorado State are both 3-3 three and three in conference. New Mexico, 0-6. In the West Division, San Diego State is back in the top 25 at number 25 in the coaches poll. The Aztecs visit Hawaii next weekend, as we just talked about. That game will decide who wins the West Division. Hawaii with a road win at UNLV yesterday. Nevada sits half a game behind Hawaii. The Wolfpack had a bye this week. Fresno State's loss drops the Bulldogs to 2-4 and four in conference, 4-6 and six overall. San Jose State in fifth place in the division, UNLV in sixth. Up next on the Bulldog Insider, my conversation with the coach. I sit down with Jeff Tedford to talk about Friday's loss at San Diego State and how he and the team are handling it. That's next.